let's talk about La Plata. What was once a train stop in Southern Maryland grew into a vibrant town until disaster struck in 2002. A catastrophic F4 tornado ripped through La Plata, tearing apart local businesses and taking the lives of several community members. In the wake of this tragedy, residents found the La Plata Water Tower Star, which stood to represent the pride and joy of the community, had been destroyed in the tornado's wrath. Over these 21 years, community initiatives commemorate the disaster with the Star Memorial Garden, which features a circular paver with a granite star in the center, to symbolize the star that once stood proudly for La Plata. Our development will align with our goals, plans, and vision for a greater La Plata. We are Bricks Building Company, presenting to you Starbrook. Let's meet the team. I'm Mark Topper, the site project architect. I'm Mia Dillon, the market analyst. I'm Jalen Carlisle, the residential architect. I'm Kasim Ellis, the scheduler. I'm Mariah Stewart, the financial analyst. And I'm Rakia Wallace, who's the marketing director. Now that you've met the team, let's talk a little bit more about Starbrook. We'll be building in a developing town with a growing population. Situated on land base B and C within the Heritage Green Development Plan, Starbrook sits on approximately 200 acres with a total of 441 lots split between our detached and attached housing options. Our base price for our townhouse start at $378,000 and our base price for our detached home start at $517,000. Now with the beautiful homes and amenities developed in Starbrook, we obtain an internal rate of return of 22.84%. And now I pass it off to Nia for our market analysis. Thank you, Lawrence. La Plata is a small town in the state of Maryland located in Charles County. Today, the population has reached 9,516 and seen steady growth. The town's population is projected to double in size with the new Heritage Green development. According to the 2021 census, the largest racial group is white at 63%, followed by black at 30%. Washington, D.C., Baltimore, Maryland, and Arlington, Virginia are major cities all within a 60-mile radius of La Plata. Wintertime temperatures are typically chilly with the possibility of frost. Summertime weather is fairly warm with highs in the mid-80s. The average car ownership in La Plata is two cars per household, with the average commute time of 35 minutes to and from work. Charles County also has a public transportation system that supports La Plata's growing population. Charles County Public School District is ranked number 13 in the state of Maryland with approximately 27,000 students in grades K through 12. Our target market is geared towards three markets, experienced professionals, families, and seniors. The average market sales price for a single family detached home is approximately $497,000 and approximately $402,000 for attached homes. The median household income in La Plata is $114,309, which is higher than the, the national median of $78,075 in 2022. We have researched our competition and find that our homes fall in the sweet spot of the market. And future job growth justifies the future affordability of our homes. Now I will pass it back to Lawrence with the site design. Thank you, Nia. Now that you've seen our market study, let's get into some, some site details. Starbucks character reflects La Plata's plans for a sustainable and walkable development. Our curvy and circular site elements allude to the brick paving pattern featured in the Star Memorial Garden to invoke a deep sense of La Plata community pride. Now this design allows us to develop pocket neighborhoods to promote safety and neighborliness while allowing us to meet our environmentally conservative goals. We offer a variety of premium lots amongst our four lot types with lot type <coughs> A through C for our detached options and lot type D for our townhouses. Lot type A features 0.18 acres, Lot type B features 0.15 acres. Lot type C features 0.12 acres. And lot type D features 0.05 acres for a range of 2,000 to 2,500 square feet per lot. We anticipate to build out a total of 441 homes in a counterclockwise formation, with phase one at 173 lots, phase two at 155 lots, and phase three at 113 lots to close out our project. Now, with our beautiful and comfortable six-foot-wide sidewalks, we provide access to our various amenities, notably our amenity center. Spaces including an interior basketball court, fitness center, conference rooms and offices, and an outdoor pool. Near our amenity center is our sports field and spacious event lawn, which allows for community gathering and various sponsored events. Now back to our anticipation of building out 441 homes, we took the initiative to perform a traffic impact study on the La Plata Parkway and Rosewood Road intersection to make adequate acceleration and deceleration lanes. This will allow us to make our development more desirable from a commuting perspective. And now I pass it off to Jalen for our product design. Thank you, Lawrence. 
Here at Starbrook, we want to provide our residents with a vibrant community where they can live healthy, active, and productive lifestyles among their friends and neighbors. This is accomplished through our wide variety of attached and detached homes, which consist of a total of 10 floor plans divided into four series. Of those 10, six floor plans are allocated for our two-story single-family homes, with the remaining four floor plans belonging to our three-story townhome series. Remaining consistent with the overarching theme of our constellations, our first series is the beta series. This 50-foot series consists of our two-story, three to four bed, three bath homes, which lie comfortably on our lot type seatings. Our first home in this series is the Quartz Home, a 2,175 square foot home with a base price starting at $517,000. Next is the Garnet Home, a 2,300 square foot home with a base price starting at $543,000. Our next series is our 60-foot series, also known as the Gamma Series. This series consists of our mid-size options, our two-story, four bed, three bath homes, which lie comfortably on our lot type B. Our first home in this series is the Onyx Home, which is a 2,500 square foot home, with the base price starting at $559,000. And the Emerald, a 2,740 square foot home, with the base price starting at $573,000. Our third series is our 70 foot series, also known as the Alpha Series. This series consists of our largest homes, the Jasper and Obsidian, which fit perfectly on our largest lots, our lot type A. The first home is the Jasper, a beautiful two-story, 3,000 square foot, four bed, three bath home, starting at 588,000. And the Obsidian, another gorgeous, 3,200 square foot, two-story, four bed, three bath home, starting at 629,000. Our final series is our townhome series, also known as the Delta series, which features our three and four unit row homes. Both come with consistent floor plans, which allow for customizations, however our home buyers may see fit. Our four unit townhome series consists of plans ranging in size from 1,750 square feet to 2,050 square feet, with the base price starting at $378,000 going up to $424,000. And our four unit townhomes consist of plans ranging from 1,825 square feet up to 2,050 square feet, with the base price starting at $393,000 going up to $424,000. Both our three and four unit townhomes allow for plan customizations, including an additional bedroom, main level flex room, home office, and a second story balcony. Our residential communities are positioned together perfectly to encourage a feeling of security and cohesivity. And I'll pass it back to Nia for sustainability. Thank you, Jalen. Starbucks' commitment to sustainable living and environmental protection enhanced the health and well being of the residents and the local habitats. During construction, we will enforce rigid environmental conservation plans to meet total maximum daily load tracking, to meet optimal water quality standards, and minimize turbidity. Our landscaping provides copious amounts of shading, which encourages exploration for all that Starbuck has to offer. This environmental initiative also minimizes soil erosion, creates comfortable walkability, and allows residents to save on air conditioning costs. The Starbrook Community Garden promotes health and wellness for our residents. The community garden plots will increase access to nutritious foods and strengthen community relationships while minimizing environmental hazards. We offer a variety of standard sustainable building features as seen listed above. These features range from $3,000 to $5,000 per floor plan type. Bricks Building Company strives to achieve a Sears energy rating between 13 and 14, and a HERS rating between 55 and 60, with 58 being our goal. These building features will allow homeowners to save annually on utility costs while minimizing negative impacts to La Plata's environment. Now I will pass it on to Kasim with scheduling. Thank you, Nia. After seeing our concentric site plan of the beautiful Starbuck community, I will now explain how the project is being scheduled. On March 1st, 2023, we will obtain a 200 acre acquisition for the Starbuck community. Beginning the following day, we begin mobilization and we are scheduled to break ground on March 16th, 2023, finishing in the second quarter of 2031 for a total of 3,611 days. With our site phase in a counterclockwise formation, phase one will take 1,569 days, phase two will take 1,452 days, and finally with phase three will take 590 days. Working on a five day work week, if additional work days are needed due to scheduling concerns, we will adjust and recalculate the schedule to close out the project. In this current market, we have sectioned our phasing down into nine smaller phases, one A through C, two A through C, and three A through C, to mitigate the risk of having an abundance of materials related to larger phasing development. Working with a three crew structure, working on foundation, framing, MEP, and drywall for home construction, we anticipate to complete four homes per month for a total of 441 units over the entirety of the project. 
We took the liberty to make assumptions to avoid serious delays due to the long-term ramifications of COVID-19 on the supply chain industry and the ever-increasing labor shortages. On our land development side, we plan to order all our in-ground inventory prior to the completion of each phase to account for price fluctuations and possible delays. In ordering lumber, doors, windows, and appliance packages during the scheduled pre-sales in phase one and following the execution of each contract. In creating this schedule, we're mindful to account for holidays and possible weather delays. Now, I'll pass it on to Mariah for the estimate. Thank you, Kasim. So you've seen our beautiful homes, but now let's get down to some numbers. We determined that the land acquisition costs of $6 million for land-based BNC are fair market value. We calculated our development due diligence to be 695,000 and our land development with contingency to be approximately $36.1 million, yielding a total cost of $81,734 per lot with contingency. In order for our development to support our local public school systems, we calculated our Charles County school seat fees into our preliminary government planning estimate. Assuming all data stays consistent, we expect to have a total sales revenue of approximately $197 million. As stated before, our single family detached homes range from 517,000 to 629,000, and our town homes ranging from 378,000 to 424,000. At Starbrook, we plan to have many income producing amenities with our community center and our community garden being our most lucrative. To maintain cash flow on the front end of our project, our community center will not be developed until phase 1C. With our community garden that will be developed during phase 3B, we will feature 60 total plots with three different sizes with a rental fee ranging from $35 to $83 and a fixed deposit of $50 per plot. In order to forecast future market demands, we ran a sensitivity analysis. In our base scenario, we will have an absorption rate of four sales per month with a completion date of May 2031 with an IRR of 22.28%. In our optimistic scenario, we will have five sales per month with a completion date of December 2030 with an IRR of 26.73%. And lastly, with our conservative scenario, we will have three sales per month that will put our conservative IRR at 10.46% and push our completion date back to November of 2031. I will now kick it off to Rakia for our sales and marketing. Thank you, Mariah. Now that we have shown you all of what Starbrook has to offer, I will talk about how we plan to guarantee this project success. Before the vertical construction of phase one begins, we aim to pre-sell 30 homes virtually on our website and at local events such as La Plata's annual fall festival using virtual mock-ups of our homes. Our single family detached homes range from a base price of about $517,000 up to $629,000 with a fixed HOA fee of $470, averaging about $153,000 averagely. And for our attached homes, our base prices range from about $378,000 up to $424,000 with a fixed HOA fee of $680, averaging about $77,000 annually. We offer incentives for both our buyers and our sales agents. For our residents, we offer tiered incentives ranging from seasonal promotional deals up to one year free of HOA fees. We've also partnered with the Community Bank of Chesapeake in Maryland to ensure that our buyers will have lower mortgage rates and first time home buyer programs. And for our sales agents, on top of their salary, they will receive 1% commission on all homes sold. We will be advertising through media outlets such as Billboard, Radio, Newspaper, Life Magazine, and social media outlets such as Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram, our website with photography, and other media outlets. Throughout the duration of this project, our market budget will outline the bricks personnel costing us about $1.7 million, the staging and upkeep of our model homes at about $96,000, all of our in-house promotional materials at about $6,500, and all of our media advertisement at about $540,000. Our market budget will end up with an average cost of $2.34 million. And now, I will pass it back to Lawrence for our closing remarks on Starbucks. Thank you, Rakia. Rising from those dark days of 2002, La Plata has been repairing and strengthening its close community bonds. Like a phoenix, Starbrook emerges as a manifestation for a new beginning for a greater La Plata. We offer a healthy mix of detached and attached housing options on a vast 200 acres in a developing town with a growing population. We will offer a total of 441 residential lots at a density of 2.2 lots per acre, while achieving a lucrative internal rate of return of 22.84%. Inspired by the Star Memorial Garden, Starbrook serves as a reflection for La Plata community pride. We are a bricks building company. Don't miss this opportunity. Let's make a deal on Starbrook.
<laughs> really good job, guys. I uh, really enjoyed the packet and the presentation is super polished, very professional. You can tell you guys practiced a lot, so I appreciate that. Um, some of my questions, so one of them being in your timeline, it looked like you had um, in your overall schedule, you started permitting in 2021. And I just wanted to clarify, do you mean permitting for the individual homes? Is that you seeking entitlements really? Or what, what is that in the overall schedule? Thank you for that question. So that permitting process was for the entirety of the uh, parcel acquisition. So that wasn't for the individual homes. Okay, got it. Yeah, yes, so more of the like an entitlement timeline. Is yes, ma'am. Okay, got it. Thank you. Um, and then I did, with your four unit townhome, I was curious, it just, it looked like each one of those floor plans was identical, but then they had slightly different square footages for each of those four units. Can you elaborate more on what the difference is? Yes, ma'am. Thank you for that question. So each of our floor plans, like you said, they do have a base floor plan ranging because of the square footage. They have a different door here, a room might be placed differently here, but they each allow for customization. Like we said, the home buyer can customize them how they see fit. And that's what is the cause of the uh, home plan. Okay, got it. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, could you talk, how many models did you all have? Model homes? Thank you for that question. There'll be six model homes of each of the town, not the townhomes, the single family detached homes in the first phase. Okay, and then I think you said your model home cost was $95,000. Can you tell me how you got to that number? Okay, yes, sir. So we will be staging our model homes with the inventory from our bricks building company. So it would be cost for staging and then the maintenance and cleaning up of the model homes once we're all moved out and the, just the staging of the directional signages and things of that nature. Okay, and then that, that's a lot of model homes. How, how are you staffing? Like on a Saturday, how are you staffed? Um, so our hours will be from 10 to six on Monday through Saturday. And then on Sunday, we'll have 12 to six. And that's just because we understand that a lot of people are working on that time. And we also have a live chat feature on our office, on our website, so that we can uh, elaborate for those to all have access, but we understand that it won't be just that time. So we will have scheduled appointments so that people can book online, kind of pick out their packages and then schedule an appointment, come in with our agents and plan their home that way. Okay. Great. Thank you All for right. the question. Uh, great job. Um, your, your presentation and your, your package was great. Um, I did notice something uh, I wanted to ask a little bit more about and it's called the BRICS inspections. What are, what are those? I see those showing up in the schedule with a one to two day duration. What, what happens during th those events? So aside, oh, I'm sorry, thank you for that question. But aside from the county inspections that are required, we perform our own in-house inspections so we can know what needs to be done for a punch list prior to those county or city inspections. So, so the difference in um, some of them are like, you have a bricks inspection, it's a three day inspection, like right at like MEP rough. What is, is it, is that really a three day inspection? I mean, I mean, can you not conform it and perform it in one and try to shave some days off the schedule or? We, oh, I'm sorry. No, my apologies. We can, it just depends on, I guess, how many homes at the time that we will be inspecting at one moment in that given period. So that way they can allocate enough time to go through thoroughly. Yeah. So they can go through the mechanics, the, the electrical wiring and then the plumbing inspection to make sure everything is tip top shape for those county inspections. Yeah, but we I love just added the, in the extra duration just for that. That's per I love the process. I just, you know, just be mindful of the durations. You can get a little schedule bleed on all that. Understood. Um, and then on the townhomes, it looks like the townhomes um, are two bedroom and then you can flex in a third bedroom. Is there market data that supports a two bedroom townhome in this market? I mean, this is predominantly a family market. I don't know, but two bedroom would be appropriate. So we had to take into account the fact that 39% of our population would possibly be geared toward seniors, as we say with our market analysis. So considering that there would be a wider market, we allow for the customization between two to actually four bedrooms for, like you said, the family as well. But adding the bedroom is minimal cost, but you get a huge upside on the appraisal value. So just be mindful of that one. I think there's, you know, you're selling yourself a little short. If you have the opportunity to do it, always add more okay. bedrooms. I think that's 
that's definitely a, a thing. And then uh, lastly, on the advanced framing techniques, um, what are some of the highlights of your advanced framing techniques that you would implement on this project? Thank you for that question. So for our advanced framing techniques, we're using two by six exterior walls, which are adequate for the uh, insulation and also helps with the, more, not moisture barrier, but the thermal barrier. Mm -hmm. So that is exactly what we're referring to when we said advanced framing techniques. All right, very good. Rather than the two by four standard exterior yeah. walls. Understood, great job. Great presentation, one of the most polished and um, thorough packets and presentation we've seen. Um, did not know Prezi was a thing until today. I'm happy I didn't do Vegas right last night, because if I did, I'd probably be motion sick right now. But I really like the, <laughs> I really liked what you did there. Um, and you're the only group that used the Starbrook, the paying homage to what happened there. I, that's awesome. I like the local flair. Um, my next question is really a compliment. Your um, LD estimates and your stick and brick vertical construction estimates really the, are spot on, I believe, for the numbers. I'm just question of how did you get there? Like roofing, you're, you know, I'm not saying just roofing, but how you have specific for each house. How do you come up with those numbers for the different cost codes and line items? Thank you for that compliment. So from my previous experiences with my internships working in pre-con and estimate facilities, I was able to generate and formulate and do takeoffs on the floor plans that my colleagues provided for me and being able to estimate how much it was going to cost in order to build these homes. Gotcha. Okay, good answer. Thank you very much. Great job. Hey team, uh, great job in presentation. You know, other teams looking at you, coming polished like this, well prepared is a great way to start off presentation and just want to applaud you for the time that goes into that. So thank you for it. Um, Jalen got a question for you on product. Uh, it looks like in the, in the packet we got the Jasper plan, it looks the same as the quartz plan. Was that a misprint? Because I don't see a fourth bedroom on the Jasper plan. It looks to be the same. I'm sorry, you said the quartz plan? Uh, the, the Jasper, so the 70 foot uh, Jasper. So we're going to pull that up. This no, they're not the same. Um, the quartz is actually a 2,175 square foot home. Okay. In our smallest series, I'm uh, not sure why. That's the quartz, but he's talking about the, oh, in the packet. Yeah, so, just in the, in the oh, packet. Yeah, I apologize. They okay. It's most likely just the, and I can actually go to the Jasper floor plan. Yeah, if you can just go to the Jasper, that would be helpful. Yes. So here we go. This is the okay Correct. yeah it looks so, like just maybe there's just uh maybe a copy over okay. in the book so i just had a question on that initially when i review it reviewing it um in terms of the the sizing of how you're putting the plans and the the elevations in in it you know i'm not at the point i don't have to have readers yet like tom but when i get there <laughs> it's gonna have to be a little bit more readable because the plans are relatively okay. small to read so keep in consideration that, that um the the sizing between both of them thank you um one more question on the timing so you have a project milestone table that kind of gives overall durations of some items. For example, you have the amenity center that shows to be in phase one, but it has a start date of January of 2029 and a completion date of August of 2029, which is well into you know your construction. Um, can you explain the timing of that amenity center? May you repeat that question one more time for me, please? Yes. Um, you have stated that you're building your amenity center in phase one, um, but it's shown to be starting uh, January of 2029, so relatively deep into the process. So can you explain why you're building the amenities so late in the game? Sure. So we took account to allocate for the month, amount, uh, the amount of money that we can generate from phase 1A and phase 1A, 1A through 1C. So that way we can have enough money to build the community center. So that having that amenity center built in phase 1C allows us to generate enough money. So phase one holds 173 lots. We'll be building out those 173 prior to the construction of the community center. So that money will be allocated towards that development. Okay. And then last question, um, looks like you have 34 sales in your first month, March of 2023, uh, prior to your model homes being built. Can you tell me where you're getting those sales? Thank you for that question. So like I previously stated, we'll be pre-selling at local events such as 
and La Plata's annual fall festival. We'll also be doing dusty shoe walkthroughs so that people can actually see a tangible um, product and kind of customize it that way. And we, that's how we hope to gain our sales. Okay. Just keep in mind, you know, selling that mini off the bats uh, ahead of when your construction is beginning, you have a giant backlog of buyers that are waiting for their homes to start essentially. And waiting that long for the homes to start and complete, you have the risk of margin erosion because your costs potentially will likely go up over that time frame, and you're locked in at those, those previously, you know, sales prices they locked in. So just keep that in mind and how many you're bulking up in sales in the front end prior to construction. Okay. But great job to you. Thank you so much. Great job.